everybody it's been a while since I've done a video but I just received this US Games Toth Tarot large size deck in the mail previously I had received the pocket version this is also a US Games and uh, I had done a quick uh, walkthrough of this deck in another video but my frustration with this pocket size deck being that I'm a a mature woman of 65 and I've been wearing reading glasses for quite some time I have a bit of difficulty with this pocket size version of the deck um, it's very difficult for me to really discern the detail in the cards and even even more so than my issue with the cards is the issue with the little white book which, as you can see, you know, there's my thumb. The print is extremely small. I mean, it's nearly impossible for me to read this book. So, I decided to go ahead and spring for the larger size deck. I believe it was $27 and change on Amazon. And uh, hopefully there's a white book in here that might be a little larger in size than the one that I have. So I, I'm hoping that this deck will serve me a little more uh, faithfully. So there is the unwrapping of the deck. Designed by Alistair Crowley, painted by Lady Frida Harris. Or Frida Lady Harris, depending on how... I guess that depends on how picky you are about uh, English titles. So here we have the Magnificent 78 card deck with Kabbalistic and Astrological Attributions as described in Aleister Crowley's The Book of Toth. And then we have the chariot on the one side of the box and the two of uh, pentacles or discs, whatever, on the back. This deck has a lot of uh, or the the box has a lot of sort of like dings, which is not a big deal, I guess. Okay, so let's open it up. Flip top box, nothing too extra special there. The cards are wrapped. Alrighty. And yes, we do. We have a little white book that's big enough, hopefully, for my eyes to see it and read it. So give me just a second here. We're going to undo the wrapping. And I'll compare. I'm not going to really do a thorough review because there are a lot of reviews on Toth Tarot on YouTube. But I do want to just show you a quick run through of the cards and compare. They're both by US Games, but I'd like to see if there are any appreciable differences between this deck and the uh, pocket version. So here we have the white book. Oh yes, I can tell already this is going to be much better for me. I can read it, even from back here behind the camera, I can read it. Alright, so we have an introduction, uh, the tarot and its application, and the introduction is by, let's see, I'm not sure. I'm not sure who wrote the introduction, I'm, I assume James Wasserman. And there are essays in here written by Frida Harris. And there's a commentary by Stuart Kaplan. And luckily, I will be able to read them at long last. So here we have the meanings, you know, the quick little white book meanings of the cards. I've also ordered another uh, book from Amazon. I've ordered a couple of books, actually. Um, one of them is uh, Lon Milo Duquette, a uh, book on Toth Tarot. And the other book is, I believe, it's not the tarot keywords, but it's the other book by the same author that's a little more in-depth from what I read. So hopefully those will help me. Okay, we have a brief commentary from Stuart Kaplan. And then we have the Exhibition of Playing Cards, Book of Toth, 78 Paintings. All right, the 22 trumps, a paragraph or so on each. 
Then the suits, wands, cups, swords, and discs. Then we have a little uh, essay by Frida Harris, written, who is the one who did the illustrations. And she conferred with Aleister Crowley, and so I'm really looking forward to reading her uh, synopsis of the cards and their meanings and the reason why the symbology and the images were chosen. Okay, so she also goes through each of the suits and the trumps, and that's it. Okay, so nice. I've got a book I can finally use. Alrighty, as compared to this little thing of a bobber here, I'm sure it's got the same information or mostly the same information, but I just it's just useless to me. Let's see here. Here we have a little uh, card. Now these, this is the back, the uh, Rosicrucian cross. It's got the symbols of the elements, and I understand that these all, all these petals in the inner uh, circle here correspond to the planets and the zodiac, signs of the zodiac. And then we have um, air, water, fire, and then earth, which is more base, separated from the other elements. So that is the Rosicrucian Cross. I'm not a member of any of these societies, so I don't have a big uh, or an in-depth knowledge of what that means. Then we have another card here, which has another symbol that I'm not too familiar with at all. I'm, I'm not familiar with it at all, so I'll have to do some research on that when I get my books in. And oh my goodness. I hope I'm not missing my fool card. It looks like everything's in order, but I did not have a fool card at the beginning of my, oh, there it is. It's after, uh, after the universe. Okay, so let's put it here. And I'm going to let you kind of compare as you would, might like. As you can see, this is a much larger card the colors are more vibrant. Compare, for instance, the yellows. This is much more vibrant than this card. Uh, I don't know if you can really see too closely the amount of detail. This is the smaller card. The larger card, to me, I mean, it, I don't know if it's just my eyes or if there actually is more detail. You can see the uh, bag of coins that he's got with the symbols of the zodiac and the planets. Whereas in this card, it's very difficult to make those symbols out. So there we have the, the fool, the magus. I don't know, to me, there's just absolutely no comparison. I mean, the colors are brighter, the, um, the detail is finer in this larger card. I don't know which would be considered more true to the original paintings, but I really feel for my personal use that the uh, larger deck is going to be much more useful. Here we have the priestess. Empress, no contest, the Emperor. Now I don't have uh, an A.G. Mueller deck of, or uh, uh, A.G. Mueller copy of this deck, so I don't know how that would compare. It may be totally different from these U.S. games. Hierophant. I don't know, this one just pops. This is very dull. Puny, dull. 
not useful. Here we have the lovers. The chariot. Adjustment or justice would be the uh, corresponding name in traditionally more traditional decks. Adjustment. The Hermit. I love that card. The light coming from the lamp. The figure behind. Cerberus, the three-headed dog. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. I think that's my favorite card in this deck. Here's Fortune or Wheel of Fortune. Strength or Lust. A very beautiful hanged man. I also really love this death card in this deck. Just beautiful with the scythe. Wonderful. As I said, this is not an in-depth review. I'm, I'll probably do one of those later after I've kind of uh, reviewed the literature about these decks had a chance to really chew on them a little bit, to use them. Art, or Temperance, has been renamed Art in the Toth system. The Devil. The Tower. A beautiful star. Really, really lovely. The art is uh, sort of sort of a cross between modern art and Art Nouveau, which was in vogue about a hundred years ago. Here is the moon. I've seen a sketch of a, a preliminary card that she did for the moon and it had like a a winding stream through here that went back and forth. It was really lovely. I don't know why she, why they didn't go with that card, but this is nice too. The scarab, very a lot of the Egyptian symbols in this particular card. The jackal, Anubis. All righty. Here is the sun. Just no comparison in my mind. This is so much more vibrant and beautiful. The Aeon, instead of Judgment. The Universe. Well, I don't think I'm going to compare the entire uh, two decks. I think I'm just going to uh, go with the large version here to show you the rest of the cards. Frankly, the smaller version just doesn't hold any more attraction for me. All right, so let me move that. And we'll just kind of do a run through of these cards real quickly. Knight of Wands, which is in this deck, the knights correspond to the kings. They're on horseback, so we're going through the wands. Knight, a very beautiful queen of wands. Love her cat. The prince of wands. Princess of wands. And then, let's see what happened to the ace. Well, oh, we're going backwards, I see. This is the Ten of Wands. Nine. Eight. So as you can see, they're sort of pips, but they have more information in them than a traditional pip would. Like they've got the Seven Wands, but you've also got the, um, the idea of the card. For instance, the Eight of Wands, Swiftness. And these cards have the keyword down here for those that are sort of newbies. 
So that helps. Uh, Seven of Wands is Valor. A little different from Rider Waite, but that's okay. Six of Wands, Victory. Same as Rider Waite. Five of Wands, Strife. Four of Wands, Completion. Three of Wands, Virtue. Dominion for Two of Wands. And the Ace of Wands. Next, we're going through the discs. The Knight. That's a really lovely card. Queen of Discs. See, there's just a little different feel to these cards, whereas the wand cards were sort of fiery, reddish, yellowish. Now the uh, discs are more earthy. Yellows, browns, greens. Knight, queen of wands, or discs, excuse me. The queen of discs, the prince of discs, And the Princess of Discs. And this is uh, featured on the cover of the uh, Alain Milo Duquette book. I think it may be his favorite card in the deck. Princess of Discs. All right, then we have Ten of Discs. Nine of Discs. Eight of Discs. Prudence. Seven of Discs, Failure. Six of Discs, Success. Five of Discs, Worry. Four is Power. Three, Works. Two of Discs, Change. And the Ace of Discs. I love this card, really beautiful. Knight of Swords. Sort of got a little helicopter thing going on there. Queen of Swords. I love that she's in the clouds. I think I've said that in my other video. Prince of Swords. And Princess of Swords. Alrighty, then we have 10, 9, 8, Interference, 7, Six, five, oops, oh, here we are. Four of swords, three of swords, two, and the ace. Now these are as they came to me from the box, so I did not rearrange these cards. This is just how they came out of the box. Uh, Knight of Cups. Queen of Cups, Prince of Cups, Princess of Cups, Ten of Cups, Nine, Eight, Seven, Six, Five, four, three, two. It's such a beautiful card. Look at that. With the um, lotus and the fish. I love that. And the Ace of Cups. So as you can see, it's a beautiful deck. I'm really glad that I got this uh, large size version. It's going to be much more useful for me. Um, I'm sure I'll hang on to the pocket deck. Maybe, you know, when I'm traveling or whatever, it'll be useful once I learn more about these cards. And uh, thank you for taking a look, and I hope to see you next time.